Following the declaration of war by the United States on June 19, 1812, while General William Hull's American Army of the Northwest were hiking their way northward through the forests and the intractable Great Swamp of Michigan, William Bell was aboard the ship the Cuyahoga Packet, drifting calmly up the Detroit River to rendezvous with General Hull at Fort Detroit. Bell, an assistant quartermaster general in the U.S. Army, considered himself lucky to be making this journey by water. The alternative was to accompany Hull on a forced march through mosquito-infested terrain in the heat of early July. Bell had relieved Hull's troops of some of their heavier supplies, including the Army's musical instruments. Aboard the ship were over 30 soldiers too sick to travel by land, as well as several of the soldiers' wives. Hull's son and assistant thought it wise to pack the general's personal belongings on the boat, including his journals and all of his correspondence with U.S. Secretary of War William Eustis. The Cuyahoga was proceeding up the Detroit River, confident that the British at Amherstburg were unaware that war had been declared. This was not the case. The fur trading outputs in the area, controlled by the Astor family of New York, had made a point of advising all of their operations on the outbreak of war. Amherstburg was aware, and on July 2nd, on the Canadian side of the Detroit River, a young French-Canadian officer of the Provincial Marine could make out the stars and stripes waving on the schooner as it passed casually by the British fort. Lieutenant Frederick Roulette was about to add to his reputation as a bold and quick-thinking officer. He ordered his armed men into a longboat, and they rowed vigorously toward the larger American ship. The Cuyahoga's captain... Chapin was expecting greetings from the usually friendly Canadians. Instead, he was shocked to find himself staring down musket barrels as Roulette ordered the mainsails to be lowered. Chapin looked to the confused bell for orders, but one warning shot from Roulette was all the persuading the captain needed to bring the vessel to a stop. Roulette boarded the schooner to find a force six times the size of his own party. Luckily for the French-Canadian officer, all the Cuyahoga's arms were stowed below deck, and the Americans were too sick to fight. As Roulette ordered everyone to be secured, he informed Bell that the United States declaration of war had arrived in Amherstburg the previous evening. Bell and his men offered no resistance, convinced that this young lieutenant had been somehow mistaken. As a final touch to the proceedings, Roulette discovered the stash of musical instruments and ordered the Americans to play God Save the King as they sailed the Cuyahoga into Amherstburg. Only on closer inspection of the captured goods did the British realize their good luck. General Hull's correspondence with Eustace described in complete detail the army that was presently marching north toward Detroit. The strength and morale of its regiments, the state of supplies, and possible offensive strategies. Hull's personal papers betrayed his growing concerns about facing native warriors in battle. All of this information was forwarded to Brock, who made excellent use of it to develop his own strategy for the successful taking of Fort Detroit. 